Okay, guys, so I promised a quick video tutorial on using Math 3D. So here we go. Uh, my motivation is that I remember right here, I built the equation of a sphere of radius R that was centered someplace. And I want to get the computer to make that look right. So here's what we're doing. Uh, we're just going to go in here and looking at Math 3D, there's a couple of things. So there's this kind of viewing area. You can't mess with much in there except to kind of scroll around. On the left hand side here, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So the first word of warning for everybody, and this is going to get me um actually, you know what the heck? I'm going to show you where this I'm going to I'm going to show you a thing that happens to be able to. So there's this surface. I don't care about this surface. I'm going to delete it. So when you go in here and you're adding an object, if you know something like Z equals some stuff. Then you use explicit surfaces. If you know Z equals stuff that's in R and thetas, then you can use this explicit surface in polar. Uh, the rest of these are going to get some airtime later. So trust me, we're going to do a ton of parametric curves and surfaces. You're going to get good at them. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of implicit surfaces. That's when you don't know what Z is equal to. So that's the one I'm going to have to use right now. Uh, pay no attention to the unstable feature thing. It seems to work fine. Um, we'll have occasion to use a lot of these others in a couple of days. So here's my implicit surface. So you can see this is kind of a some kind of a sheet uh, bent around and like a weird. You guys recognize that thing? It's called a, these guys. These are called hyperbolas. This is a this is a thing we'll talk about. Um, but for right now, I just want to make this fair. So I'm going to do something like this. Uh, and that doesn't make sense. So I'd like to put an R squared over here, right? Oh, and it's telling me that there's an undefined symbol. So what that means is, I don't know what R means, because you didn't tell me what R means. It's not a native thing. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to go down and add a variable slider. So. Here I'm going to change the name of the variable that I want. I'm going to change this variable to R. And I'm going to change its range. So I'm going to set it so it goes from 0 to 5. Uh, and then I'm going to set it to something like 2 to begin with. Um, you might notice that this is not a sphere. Uh, and also that it looks chunky as heck. So you can improve the way it looks by going in here and increasing the number of samples. Uh, be aware that this may cause the website to crash. Uh, I'm going to put it at, I think I just locked it. Yep. So I just hit, I just told it to use 100 and now it's, uh, yep. So stuck. No can, no can bueno. Uh, you can give it something more like 50 or so. It smooths out pretty easily. Uh, be aware that it makes your sketches slow. So you might build them chunky and then increase them towards the end. Um, notice this looks like not a sphere. You guys see that that's too short. Looks like it got mooshed in the uh, Z direction. So one quirk of Math 3D is that it always starts with a one half scaling on the Z axis for some reason. Go in there and delete it. Uh, don't worry, we'll figure out why that's there in a bit. It's mostly for viewing. So here's my sphere. Um, right now it's centered up where? Take two seconds, think to yourself, where is this sphere centered? Awesome, I hope you said it's centered at the origin. So I'd like to center it somewhere else. So I'd like to put in those three variables, H, K, and L. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add variable sliders. So I'm going to add a variable slider for h. I'm going to add a variable slider for k. And I'm going to add a variable slider for l. Right now, those are all 0. So in here, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to put in my little parentheses that I needed. Oops, x gets minus h. And y gets minus k. You'll note 
this is not Zoom making this take a while. This is the website itself. Um, it is just a little bit clunky chunky. Um, there's actually a very cool Stack Exchange post where somebody gets annoyed that Geo uh, that Desmos doesn't do 3D, so he built this. Uh, so this is a this is a really cool piece of software that is a as far as I know one person shop. Um, so sorry, digression about software. My bad. Uh, I've now added my coordinates for the center. I've got them set equal to r squared. Right, so this is my equation of a sphere. My sphere is not moved. What adding the sliders did for me. Oh, I've got, hang on. My sample's a little high for scooting this thing around. So I'm going to switch this down to 30 so you can see it move a little bit. Okay, so I'm shifting it in the K direction. And you might notice that I had spun all the way around there and things were looking like they were happening backwards. So remember that this is where labeling axes get it's important. Usually if I'm drawing things in class, I'm kind of drawing from like this perspective-ish. It's like up here. Right, where I've got the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. When I tend to make these sketches, I might scoot over here. So I've got x and y and z going up. So it's just a shift in perspective. It doesn't actually make a huge difference, uh, except it can get a little confusing sometimes if you're not keeping track of it. So just keep a track. Just keep track of where you're sitting in space when you make these. It gets really, really confusing if you sit down here underneath the X, Y plane. Okay, I hope that's a start for a, a math 3D tutorial. Um, if you want to add points, uh, you just put a point in. You can type, uh, you can type values in here. Uh, you can turn things on and off. Uh, that's not visible. You can also change the opacity of thing, opacity. So like, say I wanted my sphere to be really see-through, I might do something like that. So now the sphere is only 10% visible. And then I could put this point that I want to represent the center as h comma k comma l. And now I'll be able to see that as I move my sliders around, that that center point stays in there. Um, we might make a little radius, to kind of follow us around, we could do that. It would take us a little bit. Um, there's more settings in here, so you can label points. So I could call this thing capital C for the center and give it a turn its label on. Um, you can you know change some other stuff in here. There's lots of lots of options for what you can change in here. Uh, if you want to turn them on and off, you can just click this. Uh, if you click and hold, you can change the colors. So you'll see me make lots of stuff like this. Um, my hope is that you guys get used to making stuff in here because it's really handy to be able to visualize your homework. Cool. That's been your uh, Math 3D tutorial. Thanks.